Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, what's the next service you have to attend? What's the next service you have to attend? Tenth Sunday. Yeah, tell your neighbor, tenth Sunday. Fifteenth is coming, sixteenth is coming, eighteenth is coming, but tenth Sunday. So, some interpreted that uh, photograph as the thorn among the roses. Others interpreted it as the rose among the thorns. So, it's a matter of interpretation. So, let's pray for the word of God today. Thank you, Father, for joy in the house. Thank you for that sense of your presence that overwhelmed us this morning. That you are true and in the month of December somehow you become truer or nearer and the city fills up with so many opportunities. Thank you for the city of Colombo. Shall we say thank you for the city of Colombo that embraces the month of December so much and we can preach the gospel, the glad tidings, give us opportunities everywhere in Jesus' name. My message today is titled, Gift of Jesus' Myrrh to Me. So turn to your neighbor and say, what do you think of me? Am I myrrh or frankincense? Just, just ask and see what the reply you get. At home, am I myrrh or frankincense? What's the, what's the reply you got? Yeah, okay. Uh, so, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Not her, but him. Whom did they worship? The infant Lord Jesus Christ. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Matthew chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. So a little bit of history there. This star probably was a supernova, scientifically, because it was so spectacular. The Magi, the royal astronomers in Persia picked it up as a special star, signaling the coming of a king. And they were familiar with Daniel's prophecies and Balaam's, Balaam's prophecy in the Old Testament that a star would come up when the king of the Jews be born. So they were familiar with that history. So they took a long time in coming, because it was a long journey. By the time they came to Jerusalem, thinking the king would know about this, it would have taken at least one year. And therefore, when Herod wanted to kill who might be the Messiah baby, he killed all the babies of, Jeru of Bethlehem under the age of two. Understood? So they took a long time coming, and Herod, the cruel man, and history says his character is entirely consistent with that cruelty of killing so many babies. Uh, then it was a star, and they bowed at the feet of Jesus, not at the mother, and worshipped him. They opened their treasure chest. They were royal uh, dignitaries, so they probably came with a fairly large contingent of people, that's why Herod got worried, excited. Who is this king born that other kings should respect him so much? Did you understand the context? Why Herod sought to kill baby Jesus? And there was myrrh at his birth as a gift and also the pain that uh, Joseph and Mary had to bear and the sorrow that came on entirety of Bethlehem because so many babies were dead because this is cruel king. But Jesus was, the parents were informed in the night, so Joseph and Mary uh, left in the night, informed by a dream, warned by a dream, and Bethlehem was on the highway between Syria and Egypt. So without going to Jerusalem, you can quickly get out of Israel and take that highway, and baby Jesus was laid in an inn, isn't it? That inn, that inn was called Chinham's Inn. And it was built on a royal patrimony land that David gave to a man called Barzillai for protecting him from Absalom. And the grandson of Barzillai built the inn of Bethlehem. It was still there when Jesus was born and he was laid in a manger. Now, uh, precious little lambs who were made for sacrifice and to be taken to the temple were also wrapped in swaddling cloth 
because it was cold at that time and was laid in a manger. So when uh, shepherds were told there will be a baby now in a manger, they, they, their mind flipped and they understood, so this is a lamb, a special lamb, but it's a baby who is a lamb who will be wrapped in bandages because of the cloth, because of the cold, and would be laid in a manger. You got all this? Got all this? Can you write this down when you go home? Got all this. So that's the historical context of Matthew 2, 10 to 11. Myrrh signified a suffering Messiah. Frankincense signified a high priest. And gold signified the king he was. So he was three in one, isn't it? Uh, myrrh was an ubiquitous substance used for many, many things at that time. It was used as a compounding base. Myrrh had the Mer had the ability to bring together all the competing spices and blend them into one. Now say with me, I am like Mer because I am able to bring different people together and get the best aroma. That's what a connect group leader is. Bring different people together and bring out the best aroma because that was the quality of myrrh. Myrrh was very expensive. It didn't have a very strong, uh, f very strong fragrance, but it brought out the fragrance of other spices. So tell, let's say together, I want to be like myrrh, bringing out the best in others. Okay, you understood the context of myrrh? So Jesus is our myrrh, he in us, and brings out all the different parts of our being that tries to be schizophrenic at times, divided into different sections, but he brings us the best in us together that we will be the best fragrance for Jesus. Okay, so tell your neighbor again, I am the best fragrance for Jesus. That's what we are called to be. That's what we are called to be. So make a positive statement, it's the house of God, and if that has not been so, today is a prophecy that is going to be so. Amen. So it brought out the fragrance of others. Thirdly, it was used for medicine often. It was used as an analgesic. It was used for skin ailments. And it was used as a part of a... So if, now also they are rediscovering different, different medicinal qualities of myrrh. Myrrh is still expensive. And they blend goat milk can myrrh together. Has anyone used that? Goat milk soap? Yeah. It's getting very expensive and marketed all over the world now. Uh, so myrrh had its medicinal purposes. It was used for skin therapy, you know. So nothing is new. Every spa in Jesus' time had myrrh. Okay? Yeah. Uh, sixthly, it was a great gift to honor someone. So when myrrh was given as a gift, the costly myrrh was very expensive. Its weight was the price of silver. So 100 gram of myrrh would be like 100 grams of silver. It was very costly. Then it was used in trading and so on. Uh, bearing in mind there was a high quality, excellent quality, exotic myrrh, and there was also a low quality one, so that when poor people had to use it for funeral lights, they used the, the, the poor quality, cheap one, but there was a very exp expensive one also. By the time the Magi came, Mary and Joseph were not in the stable. They worshipped baby Jesus and not his mother. Herod killed all the babies under, the under two years. Magi took time to come. It was the official name of royal astronomers or counselors of Persia. They probably knew Daniel's prophecy and the time had come to be to fulfill Daniel's prophecy of 69 weeks and Daniel's prophecy of the 70th week is coming around pretty soon. Yeah, that's the period in which we are, but Magi lived in the time when the 69th week would come, when he would be born and crucified. So his life was 33 and a half years. He lived four Passovers, first one, two, three, four, between four Passovers, you have three years, and he be began his public ministry six months before the 
Passover, all this is there in the Bible and the timeline for Passover in Jesus' life can be found in John's Gospel. Okay. Myrrh was an apt gift bespeaking the travail around Messiah's incarnation. Mary was pregnant before wedlock. It was a harsh journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem and a harsh night in the stable amid animals, straw and dung. Joseph was a poor carpenter and for Jesus' dedication they offered the poor offering of a turtle dove. They were so poor. So that dedication came before the Magi came. Understood? Jesus' dedication as an infant came before the Magi came, the wise men came, because it took over a year for wise men to come. Understood? Yeah. Have you brought your brain to church? Tell your brain, come to church on Sunday. Brain, come to church on Sunday. You'll do very well in the next five days. Brain, come to church on Sunday. Begin, begin, begin the week on Sunday with your brain in the church, with your heart and spirit. You'll do very well in the next five days. Okay. Uh, so that was Myrrh and Messiah from birth. So Myrrh was there at Jesus' birth. Move the slides, please. Myrrh was there at Jesus' birth. Myrrh was there at Jesus' crucifixion because they mixed Myrrh with vinegar and tried to give it on a sponge to him, but he didn't take it because he went through the agony of the cross without the analgesia of myrrh. Myrrh was used as a painkiller. But Jesus said, no, I'll, go, I'll bear the pain without. Next one. Why myrrh? Then myrrh was there at Jesus' burial. Uh, there was a gentleman who brought very expensive myrrh, because that was his honor to Jesus, with aloe, to apply on his burial, because Jews wrapped the body in bandages and then apply the embalming substance. Did you understand that? And who's the gentleman who brought myrrh and aloe to Jesus? You get a kiko if you get, give the right answer. Who is the gentleman who brought myrrh and aloe to Jesus? About 80 kilograms. What was his name? What was his name? Ask your dad, he will know. Yes. His name was Nicodemus. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, highest body in town. He came to see Jesus at night. So he was a secret disciple, Bible says, because of the fear of Jews. But at his death, he came and honored. And therefore, there was proof that Jesus really died and was really buried and put in a tomb. Uh, then also, myrrh was used for a royal prince, Psalm 45 says together, yes. And probably Mary Magdalene and others again took myrrh early Sunday morning and went to the tomb. By the time they went to the tomb, the rock had rolled and the body was not there. Though they went with spices to anoint the body. You remember all the scriptures? Yes. So myrrh tree is the dried gum of a species of balsam called balsamon dendron myrrh. That is the full name. This is a stunted tree growing in Arabia. So it did not grow in Palestine naturally, but Solomon brought the myrrh tree to Palestine. Uh, that's how he, Palestine itself had a different tree that produced a kind of myrrh, which was used before that. Okay. Myrrh spoke for his life. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. And sheep are weak, defenseless. They fall over easily. Sheep are not very wise, they are witless. They follow each other into danger if they don't have a shepherd. Turn your neighbor and say, are you like that? They follow each other into danger. The sheep instinct. So that's why they need a shepherd. And Matthew 9.36 says, Jesus saw them like a sheep without shepherd, scattered and torn by wolves. So the first shepherd is father in the house. 
when a man decides to marry, he is deciding to become a shepherd. Did you understand that? From day one, he has to be a shepherd, lead her into green pastures of Brookside, correct? No, Psalm 23 doesn't say that, but if you are in Brookside and you are a man whom you are going to marry, lead him into green pastures of Brookside or lead her. That's right. Turn to your neighbor and say, I got it. Some Sunday mornings I look at some people specifically for specific reasons. Other Sunday mornings I look at everybody commonly here. Yeah. So this Sunday morning there are some specific references to this. Yes, we are shepherd to, a shepherd knows, you know. A shepherd knows. He has to know, yes. Uh, sheep are wavered and tend to wander. They can miss their steps and they eat too much and fall out with the legs up. It's a fatal condition. So quickly the shepherd watches the flock and he sees that bump is not there. You know, everyone is a bump. His keen eyes, he sees that bump is not there on Sunday. What happened? What did they do on Saturday night? So it still goes on. You know, shepherd has to, uh, has to have eyes to see why that chair is empty, why that bump is not there. That's the work of the shepherd. All of us sheep have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly. Yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. This is Jesus' life of healing myrrh and bringing everyone together. You remember what I told about the myrrh qualities? It brings anybody, any spice together. Myrrh is a compounding, cementing, uh, base for everything to come together. That's the life of Jesus. So, uh, this is good news for everybody, the rich and the poor, educated, uneducated, high caste, low caste, anybody needs to come to Jesus, isn't it? It's good news for everyone, none expecting. Those who had righteous life and obeyed the law, those who had terrible lives and disobeyed the law, all need to come to the mirror of Jesus and receive his life. Amen. So please use this time. People are open during December times. And it could have been December that Jesus was born because in uh, Israel, in Bethlehem, it's the time, best pastures in Israel. The grass is greenest in December, but it's a month of good rain. It's a little cold, but not too cold for shepherds to be out with their flocks. Give me a wave if you understood this. Yeah, okay, yeah. So the, some criticism that Christmas could never have been in December is actually not historically true, it could have been. If you want any more details about it, uh, you, you, I can't tell on Sunday, come on a Saturday and I'll give you a four hour lecture on it. All the historicity, historicity of Jesus' birth. You want to come on Saturday to listen to that? Just send me a WhatsApp, yeah. That didn't sell. That was a very bad market pitch here. Yeah. I need to ask Ashan how to do this pitch better. Why should you follow Jesus? Uh, because he was, he, there was so much myrrh in his life. Jesus became myrrh. They spat on him, struck him, whipped him, beat him again. And they put the crown of thorns and beat it with a pole. So the pictures of the passion of Christ are true. It implies, they, according to Isaiah 50, they pulled his beard also to cause him more pain and to insult him. He became myrrh for us, isn't it? So when we understand the myrrh he became, our devotion to him will increase and we will come to repentance and godly sorrow about uh, how carefree or careless we might be about our faith. Begin it by reading scriptures carefully. Read everything about Jesus. Read all the scriptures, but read everything about Jesus in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. That's how I sustain myself. I constantly meditate on the life of Christ. I endlessly read scriptures about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I remember. This is not some brain brilliance. It's because I constantly go on chewing on scripture so that I meditate on scripture because his life is so precious Every time we read one more scripture, the same scripture, we absorb more of it. Shall we say together, as I read scriptures on Jesus, I absorb him more. I absorb him more. So at every age, 
please read scriptures more, especially the scriptures about Jesus. We absorb him more. So his cross, uh, how Jesus became myrrh, spat on him, struck him, whipped him, beat him again, uh, blows, uh, thorns on the scalp, beaten so bloody he became unrecognizable. He became like that myrrh tree. The myrrh tree oozes one drop at a time, very precious myrrh. It is brown in color and you have to scoop it and take it. If you stab the myrrh tree for commercial purposes, which they do, you get a very liquid kind of myrrh, which is inferior myrrh. That is also sold in the market. But if you allow the myrrh tree to bleed or ooze, it's very precious myrrh. Understand? So when you have circumstances in which you feel crushed, let Jesus ooze out of you. Amen. Shall we give a clap to that thought? So let Jesus ooze out of you in every painful circumstance. So the myrrh tree looked horrible like Jesus on the cross. Isaiah 53, 3 says he looked horrible, unrecognizable. Because he was so much in pain, but for our sake, his pain was our healing. His stripes was our healing. You understand the nature of myrrh experiences? As we go through the fellowship of his suffering, we have the power of his resurrection. Let's say it together. As I go through the fellowship of his suffering, at the hands of whoever, I have the power of his resurrection coming into my life. And if you have the same thorn prick coming at you again and again, it is because last time you failed the exam, the test, the trial, tribulation that comes at you, when you have a Jesus response to it and overcome, that exam does not come back to you. Did you understand the term of testing and exam? That, that bad experience or the testing things that come at you, come at you because you ha didn't have a Jesus response, you had a self-response, so the stab comes again. But if you have a Jesus response, so let's say together, if I have a Jesus response of myrrh healing the sorrow, what is the Jesus response? It's a sorrow, but the myrrh of Jesus heals it. It's a wound, but the myrrh of Jesus heals it. It's a shame, but the myrrh of Jesus covers it. Amen? That's the Jesus equation, why it's called myrrh. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He had to carry the cross, the cross bar that he carried uh, to the place. It was about 100 pounds, and he had to travel 650 yards from the praetorium where he was judged and told to be crucified out of the eastern gate of Jerusalem to get to Golgotha, it was about 650 yards. Uh, so he carried it, being whipped at the same time, fainting, he carried it. That's what is called Via Dolorosa. That is still there, the way of suffering, Via Dolorosa. Crucified at Golgotha, nails driven into his wrist, not to his palm, because he hung with the ulna and the radius, the nail going like that. Did you understand that? So he hung on it and the whole body weight comes on it and then you can't breathe the diaphragm, uh, cannot uh, exhale, then you go into cardiac tamponade. That's for another day. Fruit of Jesus' travail. Now we go to myrrh. Love is like myrrh. Love does not behave itself inappropriately, does not seek its own way, is not irritable, in fact it is soothing, does not keep a record of wrongs, it erases, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things like man, believes all things, believes for the better. Turn to your neighbor and say, next time I'm believing the better for you. No, no, don't say like that. Don't say like that at all. Yeah. You, you, you don't use like that, isn't it? But in your heart, you believe better. In your heart, you believe better. Hope all things, endures all things. So love is like myrrh. Myrrh was everywhere. The contradiction of myrrh. Myrrh was at Jesus' birth, death, burial, and resurrection. Myrrh was at weddings and at funerals. Got it? 
be it was perfume, it was there at weddings, and it was an embalming substance, it was there at funerals also. So Jesus is the best bridegroom and he's the best friend to have at funeral times. Amen. Some of you may have lost a loved one, a father suddenly, or someone who was precious to you. Uh, these days, quite a few young people are dying early hours of the morning. So I have made a post today. This is not time to go through that. Uh, so we need to be careful with our health, especially if we have taken the prick. Yeah, to read my post today. Then myrrh was at humiliation, myrrh was at coronation. Because kings had myrrh used for their coronation. Myrrh was used for disease, myrrh was used for anointing. Did you understand? Jesus is there in all these situations. Jesus is there when we are lowest. Jesus is there when we are highest. Amen. Don't forget him in your triumph. Jesus consistently says, if you give my little, give your little crown to me, I will take your big cross all the time. Did you understand that? If you give your little crown to me, you know, we get little crowns, people appreciate us, we do things well, we get a college, well done. If we give that to Jesus, he will look after every cross that comes our way. Amen? Amen? Yeah, that's the life principle here. Yeah. Then the tree was so ugly, but myrrh was used for beauty. Incense for God and perfume for man. Myrrh was, isn't it? Myrrh was used for incense in the temple, in the tabernacle, and man used it for, uh, as perfume. And myrrh was used for prophet, priest, and king in their anointing. Myrrh was used by priest and prostitute. You remember that lady who came into the house of Simon the Pharisee, who was healed of leprosy? He gave Jesus a meal. And Jesus went there, sat down, and a woman of ill repute came off the streets and fell at his feet and started washing his feet with tears, wiping his feet with her hair, and kissed his feet all the time and anointed his head with a very expensive perfume. This is not Mary of Bethany, this is a sinful lady. Then Simon thought in his head, if this fellow is a prophet, he should know this is a useless, hopeless, dirty woman. Why is he allowing her to touch him? You remember that? Simon was doing that in his head. Jesus discerned it and said, Simon, I came to your house at your invitation. And Jesus did not say, you were a leper, nobody came to your house. He didn't say that. I came to your house and you did not give me water for my feet. You did not give me an embracing kiss. Because Simon, the high place Pharisee, thought Jesus who healed him, not worthy of that honor. Can you understand this? But how do we do on Sunday? Do we give him the honor of every Sunday coming to his house? Do we give Jesus the honor in different, different things, isn't it? Giving the first tenth of your income to God, that's how we honor Jesus, correct? So Simon didn't do that. And Jesus said, this lady has fallen at my feet, wash my feet with her tears, not water, and wipe my feet with her hair, not a towel. And she has kissed not my face, my feet, and anointed me not with just oil, but the most expensive in town, because that's what she used for her trade. Worship team, will you come, please? Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. So Ma was used in trade. It was very expensive. Rich and the poor used ma. Rich used the most expensive. Poor used the more, the cheaper kind. But they all used ma. Point number one, what we take home, Jesus' ma in a believer's life. To trust the Lord when there isn't enough. It's a very painful thing. 
it's a very painful thing when you don't have enough to educate your children or you don't have enough food on the table. Trust the Lord when there isn't enough. Because if you get on to how much is enough, you will say this country is not enough. Then you'll have to leave this country and find another country like Romania, then that becomes not enough. Then you go to another country. So don't get into this game. I know how to be brought low, I know how to abound. In any and every succumbs, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. This is Paul speaking. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Shall we say together? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you might by his poverty become rich. So what's the take home point? When there's not enough, turn to Jesus the Ma. Amen. Very painful thing it is when you don't have enough for what you need to spend. It is painful, isn't it? But for heaven's sake, if you have a real serious problem, may you not have it. If you have a real serious medical problem, go to NHSL Colombo. Correct, Rasik? Yeah. Please don't spend your money in places that don't know how to manage it. Yeah. That's by the way. Ma makes oil of joy to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. Oil of joy. This is a real myrrh ministry, long intercession, covering the needs and patches of frustrations, wounds, uh, different troubles people have. Uh, I want to release an anointing of intercession, praying with people who have problems. All prayers are not powerful prayers. So Pentecost has got it wrong uh, laterally, all the time saying, in the name of Jesus, get out! That is one form of prayer. But most of prayer is gentle, meekness, anointing, presence. D Jesus didn't shout at demons. At the word of his mouth, demons went. He ministered to demon-possessed people very carefully because they are tortured already, insulted already. So demon possession is not for exhibition, isn't it? You kneel down and quickly bring those people to healing. So there is a more consistent, of course we need anointing, we need powerful prayers, we need to address demons, they must flee from homes, out of houses, from premises, demons must flee. And when Jesus ascended, Hebrews 4.14, he passed through the heavens and all those strongholds of home demons, village demons, city demons, district demons, regional demons, territorial demons, you first meet the lance corporal, corporal, major, brigadier, that's how demon system is like that. So when Jesus went to Gadara, the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee, Gadara, Gerasenes, that was the red light district that had pigs and that's where prodigal sons went for their profligate living. So it was full of demons. And when Jesus went there, a man possessed with many demons, Jesus asked him, what's your rank? He said, I'm legion. That means 2,000 demons were inside that 2,000 demons were controlled by that principality. But at Jesus' word, those demons left and the man was completely free. Shall we give a hand clap to Jesus? So when he passed through the heavens, let me read that scripture, Hebrews 4. When he passed through the heavens, Hebrews 4, 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, will you say with me, great high priest, who has passed through the heavens. That means all these ranking structures of demons of different categories, one for soothsaying, one for the, uh, one for the Anjanang Elia, different kinds of demons for different purposes, all that he destroyed. And so when Christ is enough, is in us, we are ascended with him to heavenly places, so all the demons are under our feet. 
isn't it? They are under our feet. That is our jurisdiction. That is our dominion. They are under our feet and we speak his authority. People with authority don't have to shout. Correct? Those who pretend authority, you have to shout. People with authority, you don't have to shout. You just say it and demons obey. That's what the centurion said. Demons obey. Hebrews 4.14 we have a high priest who have passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. So what is a confession? What we believe, what we say, what we practice. Let's say together, what is a confession? What we... Sasha, you're listening, huh? What is a confession? What we believe, what we say, what we practice. Three must be in alignment, then it happens. Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize, that's the ma, with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. That's the healing. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may re receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Ma makes oil for joy. Think of ma and infant, King Jesus born in a stable. Three, when we have persecution because of the witness and for righteousness, we remember Smyrna. Smyrna was a church at the time of John the Apostle and the Greek word Smyrna means myrrh. Revelation 2.9, I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. To Laodicea, he said, you think you are rich, but you are miserable and poor. But to Smyrna, he says, I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. Do not be afraid of the things which, uh, which you are about to suffer. Be faithful until death. I will give you the crown of life. So that is when you are persecuted for witnessing, for righteousness. Remember Smyrna the Mer. Thirdly, Thirdly, la, 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 la. Yeah, thirdly, when we are persecuted. Fourthly, myrrh in perfume of friends makes fragrance last longer. So let's, let's say this together, Lord Jesus. I want to be a friend in joy. I want to be a friend in pain. Will you be friends like that? That's what connect groups are meant for. Friends in joy. Friends in pain. Myrrh is like that. Did you understand that? Oil and perfume make the heart glad and the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. We need friends who stick with us in trouble. Myrrh tree with ugly bark because of many piercing ooze the fragrant costly myrrh one drop at a time like Jesus on the cross. Finally, myrrh merges. I told this already. Myrrh brings together unlikely people, different people, differently abled people, uh, the underdogs. The myrrh brings together the oppressor and the oppressed. Jesus is better than Karl Marx. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is better than Karl Marx. Yeah, you must be committed to that. And Jesus is our Mali Marvel. Jesus is our compass. T tell yourself, yeah. Jesus is our compass. Yeah. He brings together the high and the low, the weak and the mighty, the educated and the uneducated. He brings together the Kulahina and the Kulina. He brings together the Govigama and the Padu. We are not conscious, isn't it? Do we look for caste when we are married? Why must I look at Radley? What does he know about that? I must look at a real, real, real... I must look at a real Indruogi, I think. Yeah. Do we look at caste when we marry? No, isn't it? Yeah. He brings together everything. Shall we say thank God for Jesus? Let's rise to our feet. He brings together everything. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed are they who mourn, they shall be comforted. Godly sorrow through repentance brings life. We repent for others. We fill up the sufferings of Jesus in our experiences. We bear the marks of Christ. 
we bear reproaches for Christ's sake. We feel the groaning of the Holy Spirit when He's groaning in us to get us from this to be Jesus-like when there is a gap in our life. We know the fellowship of His suffering that we may receive the power of His resurrection. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Not I, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So what are we going to sing? Meekness and majesty. the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, anyone online, anyone on site, this is the time to receive the Lord Jesus into your heart. He forgives every sin. He knows the bitterness of failure. He knows the bitterness of disappointment. He knows the bitterness of betrayal. All that became myrrh in his life. Please receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. If you have once known Christ, but gone far away, this is the time to come to Him. Will you say with me, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. 
there is room in my heart for you. Forgive me my sin, Lord Jesus. I trust your sacrifice on the cross. My shame, my failure, my bitterness, my frustration, I cast upon you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me my sins. Wash me clean in your precious blood. Thank you. Thank you.